Senator Julianne Ortman carries the Senate Jobs and Tax Relief Bill. It contains three key elements, including the gradual phasing out of the business property tax, it eliminates the marriage penalty, and it asks the governor to find areas of savings that reflect approximately $100 million. The senator joins me now to talk about her bill. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, Madam Chair, let's go through these elements, if we can, beginning with the, the business property tax and then working our way through. Sure. Uh, the state general levy, as it's called, is about 30 percent of the property tax bills for businesses across the state. Small or large, whether they're making money or not, about 30 percent of their property tax is paid to the state, so the rest to the local governments. We hope to eliminate that tax. It was started in 2001. It was intended to buy down the taxation for school districts. But those school districts have subsequently raised the taxes, so unfortunately the businesses ended up with the short end of the stick and they're paying for both. So in these times, especially with the economic recession, we want to encourage economic growth. And by allowing all those businesses statewide, small or large, in Main Street, uh, small towns or in Minneapolis, if they keep more of that money, they will invest it well in capital equipment, they'll invest it in new employees, in pay raises, um, research and development, expansion of their properties. That would be so good for the economy in all of our communities, small and large. And now the marriage penalty, the elimination of that. Yeah, you know, uh, the uh, federal Congress and President Obama authorized the uh, federal uh, marriage penalty for two years, the, the relief to all um, residents in the, in the country. Um, we wanted to conform to that in Minnesota. Unfortunately, in Minnesotans have to add back $1,950 of income for the failure of our government to uh, conform. So what that means is taxpayers pay their federal liability and then they recalculate their income for purposes of uh, state tax. It's $1,950. There are only two years that this relief is available to Minnesotans. One was 2011. The governor vetoed that relief. We're going to try again for 2012. Hopefully Minnesotans can all take advantage of the federal and the state tax relief for that. And now the gradual phasing out of this business property tax does have some cost attached to it. You're asking the governor to pay for it. Well, let me just um, put those in the proper order. The marriage penalty is $60 million or about two-thirds of the bill. That would be relief for that marriage penalty. About $31 million is for the state general levy. And so that's $90 million of our $102 million uh, tax relief and jobs bill. There's also some tax credits for angel investors or entrepreneur credits. Um, for the military pay subtraction, we are the 10th least friendly state in the nation for uh, providing uh, good tax benefits to our m military veterans, 45th worst in terms of the business tax climate. So that's why our priorities are the way they are. The $102 million we've asked the governor and his, his commissioners to help us identify the savings in the state budget. The state budget is $35 billion, $100 million is a, less than about a quarter of a percent of the state's budget. We think they can go back to the books, roll up their sleeves, get out their pencils, and help us find that savings to, um, to basically plant a seed in the economy for economic growth and individual income tax relief for families. So we're asking for their help. To the extent that they are unwilling to help us identify what Minnesotans know are real savings that are available in our budget, then we can draw on the reserves if we have to. And about those reserves, I would say that they are pretty much at an all-time high. Over the last 20 years, there have only been about four years where we've had a reserve that's over a, a billion dollars. Um, Minnesotans would like to see that money reinvested, and this $102 million, as I said, would be seed money and economic growth. It's the taxpayer's money if we have a surplus, and so we should be looking carefully at what we do with that. It shouldn't be a honey pot just held over for savings at some future time. We should look at reinvesting a very small part of it. When your tax bill was unveiled, Senator John Marty, he's the lead minority on the committee, he says that the bill does nothing to ease the tax burden of the middle class. Would you agree with that statement? I completely disagree. The marriage penalty is the middle class, and it would be for all Minnesota families that are married. They shouldn't have that penalty. So individual income tax relief is absolutely targeted at the middle class. We're going to pontificate here for a moment. Your bill compared with the House version of the tax bill, they're, they're pretty different. There are some significant differences in there, including that the House is pushing a bill that, comparable to yours, does eliminate the business property tax eventually. 
and property taxes for homeowners. It also pays for the cuts by reducing the tax credit for renters and increasing taxes on corporations that operate overseas. Now, you've stated publicly you won't support these measures, so how challenging do you think this conference committee could be? Well, I'm going to say the viewers won't be surprised when I say that I like my bill <laughs> and the Senate's version of our bill. Um, I think that we have the um, a, a different set of priorities, but we respect the House. And Representative Davids and I have worked well in the past, and we came with different approaches last year, and we're able to work through our differences. We will be again. Do you think the governor will support your measure? Oh, I sure hope so. I, I've done everything I can to meet with him and work with him. I think he is interested in eliminating the inflator or the, the device that automatically inflates that state general levy every year, the business property tax. I think he's very interested in relief for military veterans, uh, the angel investment tax credit. So I think there's lots of ground here for agreement. That targeted property tax relief is in the House and the Senate bill, and I believe the governor's very interested in that too. So I think there is some common ground here. I believe the commissioner and the governor are going to work with us when we get these bills to the conference committee, and we'll see if we can't get some good work done for Minnesotans. Do you like your bill, the way it stands? I'm very proud of the bill, and it has bipartisan support. Very proud to have earned Senator Ann Rest's support in the committee. I hope to have her support and others on the Senate floor because it is a very balanced bill. Okay, Senator Julianne Ortman, thank you for coming in and detailing your bill. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me.